everybody, and welcome back to the T. Blake Brady YouTube channel. I've been talking about uh, the character Rolson McCain and the books in the Rolson McCain series. Today, I'm going to take a little departure from that, although I'm still going to be talking about the series. These, there are going to be a few usable tips here as far as writing goes, but I'm going to talk about it through the lens of my own novels. And so I want to talk about sense of place, which for me is the way that a novel feels based on its location and the reality that you get from being there. There's nothing that I hate more when I read a book than not feeling as though where I am is real, especially if it's a real place like New York City or Los Angeles. You know, I've read mystery novels, I've read novels where it take pla takes place in Los Angeles, but it, it can be any city. It doesn't feel like lived in Los Angeles. One character, excuse me, one writer who does that really well is James Elroy. He makes you feel as though you're in LA or wherever you are, but especially with his uh, LA novels. So if you look at The Big Nowhere, The Black Dahlia, LA Confidential, those books really have a sense of place and tell you where you are and you know where you are and you feel it just from the way that the words are used and the way that Elroy is able to evoke Los Angeles and the feeling of Los Angeles. And with some authors, you can tell that they don't know where they're writing about. They don't really know it. They sort of write around it and hope that you don't notice. But usually that's where you notice it the most. I'm going to talk about Lumber Junction, which is the fake. It's not a real city in Georgia, but it, it's the city that I created for the Rolson McCain novels. And I want to talk just for a minute about how I created it. I based it on my hometown. I come from a small town in middle south Georgia called Soperton. It's just teeny, just teeny tiny little town. And it's halfway between Dublin, Georgia and Vidalia, Georgia. So if you've had the onions, you know what's up. But what I did with the city was I didn't build it out. Um, I know some people who will sort of write their cities first and sort of get a sense of where the city is, but I used it like where I needed it. And I let you sort of fill in the rest of it with your imagination. But I think one of the strengths of Boogie House, the first book, is the sense of place that you get from South Georgia, uh, a place that I grew up. And the way that I did it was I took a few key locations and I just built them out as much as possible in my mind. And it's, it's, there's not really a writing tip for you here and there's no real way for me to say, oh, just use your imagination, but that's, really what I did and it's because I know South Georgia I know that place even if the city is made up I know that place and it's important if you're a writer for you to take a place any place whatever place you're imagining and really use what you know about the landscape about the features about all of it to really build out your city uh, because for example with Boogie House the first book I knew the woods I grew up partly in, in the town, as much as you can call it a city. I grew up there, <clears throat> but I also lived with my dad sometimes and he lived in the middle of the woods. And so I got a sense of what that was like and I just sort of harkened back to the memories I had of small town backwoods life. And I, I used those mental images to sort of drive the atmosphere of the book. I don't think you can do that with sort of a place that you've never been. This is one of those write what you know kinds of stories, but I feel like you you can sort of work your imagination through the movies that you've seen or through visiting, even visiting something like Google Maps or buying a, a book of architecture, looking at photographs of a certain place, you can feel the style. and. You'll probably get the details wrong of where you are and what street leads into another street or what have you. But what you will get is a sense of, more of a sense of being there. Uh, people who live there will be able to contradict you. And uh, my friend Jeffrey Eaton would say that, you know, that would be a paramount concern is people being able to call BS on where you're writing. But I'm not as concerned with that. The place is, for me is a setting that I need it to feel lived in, but I don't need it to be a map, if you know what I mean. I just, I want it to have the places I want it to have. And I feel like 
Plenty of movies are able to do that with New York City, with LA. Um, as long as you have that sort of feel, that reality to the place itself, you don't have to be an expert on it. You just have to be able to know how to evoke those feelings. And those come from, uh, just to give a few examples, they come from the little details that you add. The, the people who are, the people who populate the area or the types and styles of the buildings and the weather, uh, that sort of stuff can really help to make a place real. Especially if, you know, you, you set a scene very specifically in a place and really put a person there. It doesn't, oop, it doesn't matter how much you really know it if you can make the people feel as though you're there. And so with sort of closing out, with Dirt Merchant what I've done is I have created my version of Jacksonville. I haven't been there in several years. I used to go to the Georgia-Florida game there. But I haven't been there in several years, but what I did was used my memories and my feelings of what the place was like and who the people were. And I did a little bit of research, but I sort of built my own Jacksonville out from the center to use it for my own purposes. And so that's what drives everything in the book. So I hope it works out. Dirt Merchant will be out in March. So we will see how the native Jacksonvillians or the, the Jacks folks uh, see the book, but I hope that it works and I hope everyone likes it. Thank you for watching this video and I'll be back with some more insight into writing a little bit later this week or next week. Thanks for watching.